Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to part two of the Odin Project's JavaScript course review from a beginner's perspective. So if you guys haven't seen part one, do go check that out. That will cover the first half of the course and a lot of the, the bulk of the material is in that video. The second half is going to focus on the rest of it, which mainly focuses on React and the last couple of projects. So hang around, check it out if you've seen the first part and uh, enjoy. Let's jump into it. Now, after we wrap up the API section, we move to React. I mean, this course just keeps, it gets better and better from start to finish. Like the things you learn get just more and more interesting. React was, I'll be honest, React's the shit, okay? React is awesome. Uh, it's a JavaScript library that blends JavaScript and HTML into like a really easy to grasp language called JSX. It makes building reactive web pages super easy. So you guys see what I did there? You see what I did there? But now you're allowed to manage the state of elements, which means you can alter and render things so much easier. Say you have a background that's red. You can make a button, just make a button in JSX on React, put it in there, and when you click on the button, it'll turn the background blue without like much effort at all. I have a video going over a simple React project that does that where I kind of break down state and state management a little bit better and using React hooks. I'll have that in the link below as well. But let's jump into the projects. All right, let's jump on back over to the world's greatest portfolio. Scroll on down and jump into the CV. Now, when I start applying the jobs, I have an idea that I'm gonna do with this, but I'll save that surprise for you guys later on. So here you can see we have our CV, our cover letter, our resume. And we have name, current position, what's it say over here, address, email, phone, and GitHub. All right, so we click on the pencil and we can change the information that's being displayed. Now, my autofill is filling in a much personal information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and input everything and then we'll skip forward a little bit. And now you can see all the fields are filled in. We have our name, Michael, our current position, Boss Hog, our address, West Side, email, email at email, our phone number 281-330-8004 and then our github mike white 628 and once we have all the information in there all we have to simply do is click this x and boom it updates and live renders that information without anything else being necessary it will also do the same thing for your work experience and allow for multiple entries and does the same thing with education and allows for multiple entries as well so yeah really cool this one this is another one that I struggled with very hard initially because I could not wrap my head around uh, state, state management. Like the whole this.props thing was just so confusing for me. I stalled very hard. I could not figure it out. I ended up looking at React hooks later on, which are like a simplified way to do things. They read a lot better. And even then, I still kind of struggled and like just, just grinded my way through the project, used a lot of Google, a lot of references, and we got through it. It's not the best. It's my first React project, so I, I take it in stride. Learned a lot here, all right? It's not too bad. It's not too shabby. If I was to build another one, it'd be a hundred times better. Guarantee it. All right, so now we have our memory game. Now, what I did, each of these cards is an object, and I saved each of the objects in an array. All right, so we go through the array, all the objects are randomly generated, and when you click on one, you get a point. Now, you have to click on a different one than the one that you clicked on previously. So the first click was on Charizard, as you guys saw, and the next one's gonna be on Gengar. My score goes up by one. This is working on the use effect of React. So there's a change that you can visibly see every time something happens. So I've already forgotten who I clicked on. I think it was Charizard and Gengar. If we click on Mimic You, we go up by another one. We're at three, Tyranitar, four, uh, Eevee, five, Mewtwo, six, Cario, seven, Pikachu, eight, Snorlax, nine. Oops, 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 I dragged him. And then, I think it's Arcanine. I'm going to pick Arcanine. Boom. That's all 10. So if you get all 10 right, I should have like a big pop-up that says you did it. High score or something, right? Because there's only 10 entries, so you can only click something unique 10 times. So now if we were to refresh that, and now let's say our first pick is Pikachu. Oh, wait, I ruined it. 
So here, we had all 10. I lost my high score when I click refresh. Oh. But, um, so now we have Mimikyu, Mewtwo, Snorlax, Arcanine, Lucario, Gengar, Eevee. I think we started with Pikachu, so right now we're at 7. I'm purposely going to pick a wrong one so you guys can see what happens. We click on Pikachu again. Oh, what? Pikachu is unique? Okay, we clicked on Arcanine again. Arcanine was somebody we already clicked on. Our score resets to 0. Our high score was 8 because that's the highest we got before making a mistake. Now, there's a lot you can do if you go back and style this. Make it look nice, pretty, presentable so people want to look at it. And um, it really works in your understanding of use effect. Around this time, hooks and the use effect were starting to make sense. Everything was starting to click around here. Like this project was, was not so bad. And then lastly, we have the raid boss that is the shopping cart. All right, this was the most um, challenging React project I've done so far. So let's go ahead. Oh, I didn't put this one on my portfolio yet. It's gotta go on there. It's gotta go on there. And here we have our last React project, the shopping cart. So for this one, they want you to build a store like an e-commerce store that has a shopping cart function so you can add items to the cart, remove items from the cart, and see the total quantity. So as you can see, this is the home page. If I click on home, we're here, we're still home. But now if we go to the store, we see all these amazing guitars. We have this Game of Thrones, House Targaryen, Stratocaster, Dragonglass, Black, for a measly $35,000. Um, lots of strats. High price ranges. I threw some. I threw some mid-range ones in there too. You know, for uh, what we got the Telecaster for fifteen forty-nine, an Eric Clapton Strat for eighteen forty-nine. We got a wide array in there. And let's say we want one of these bad boys, right? We want one. We want one. We want the. Uh, we'll definitely want the Game of Thrones House Targaryen. So we're gonna go ahead and add. Let's add. Let's add five of those to our cart, right? So we go down there. We click the plus to increment the amount of guitars we want. We click Add to Cart. And then we can go to our cart and see that all five are definitely in there, right? $175,000, five guitars in there. And if we want to remove, we can simply click remove. And it's going to drop the quantity by one and the price by 35 racks. And then if we want to, say, add some more guitars, we can go back to the store. We can throw a Les Paul in there. And then we can go back to the store, throw a Telly in. Let's get a nice wide range of guitars. So we got a Strat, a Telly, and a Les Paul. And then we'll go check out. There we are. We have all our items in there. The card's total is 150K. That's a lot. That's a lot. We have all three of our guitars. And uh, we can empty the cart. But first, I want to show you guys what happens if you click check out. Click check out. That's a wrap. Thank you for checking out my project. And then we can click empty cart here, boom, and our cart value goes to zero, our cart icon appears empty. I don't know if you guys noticed, every time we put one item in our cart, or any number of items in our cart, the number up here increased. Let me just show you guys that again real fast. So we have another strat, we'll add six of those. Now our cart number up here says six. Um, so we'll just add one telly, seven. Let me come over here and look. Quantity one, quantity six which makes seven total price right there. It was after this project that I realized that I can probably start building some like real websites for people. So that's what I'm starting to look into right now. I mean, it's not the cleanest, it's not perfect, but I understand a lot more. I also used at media for the first time here to kind of, you know, make it scale down to the right size. I've never really used at media before. So when, it, when you shrink the window, boop, look at that flex box work. It's magic. Okay, that, that's a little ugly. Don't judge me, guys. Don't judge me. That's ugly. We go to our store. The guitars are displayed wonderfully. Look how beautiful that is. And we go home. Now, if you're wondering where their legs went and why there's some smudges here, <laughs> it's also the first time I resized an image in Photoshop and tried to blend it into the background. You guys can see how that went. <laughs> so we're learning. Learning's occurring, man. Each project, as long as there's improvement, there's no bad projects. So after the React section, you move on to the test-driven development section. And there you learn how to test functions using Jest. Now, if you guys did the foundations course, when they had you do the Caesar code and those other like JavaScript codes, those puzzles, and had you compare it to the test they had in Jasmine, this is the exact same thing. You're learning how to write those tests. You're learning how to test the functions. 
You're learning how to take the items that you're plugging into the function and get the result that you're expecting it to be. So you're supposed to test the functions first and then implement the functions into your code. So you learn to test first, then implement. And that leads you into the Battleship project. Now here, remember I talked about the problem I had with grids earlier. The Battleship project is like a completely grid-based project. I don't even like the Battleship game. But man, I that project for me was so hard, I completely stalled, I lost motivation, I hit a wall, I couldn't figure it out. I went to different resources on YouTube, I looked at other people's code that were going along in the Odin project, and there's something about the grids and placing items into the grids within an array, or they're within the array, that just doesn't mesh with me. And I don't know what it is I'm gonna have to do to figure it out and learn that, but that is definitely one of my weaknesses. And this Battleship game completely exposed it. So I struggled for a bit. I like stole bits and pieces from things I found on the internet and got something kind of working, but I have no confidence in that project. So I just skipped it. Maybe I'll come back to it one day. Maybe not, but I skipped it and went to the uh, Where's Waldo image photo tagging and uh, having a lot more fun with that. That gets you used to using a backend as a service. If you did the Ruby portion, they'll have you use Ruby as the backend for your Where's Waldo game, but I didn't. I chose the node route, so they have you use Firebase as the backend to your project. And you learn how to use Firebase intertwined with a project. Um, I'm working on that one right now. And then the last project they're going to have us do is the cloning of the social media app so it's going to be like YouTube or Facebook or Reddit or whatever you want to make I have an idea for what I'm going to make but I want to surprise you guys with that in a separate video and then that's a wrap after that that's it the Odin Project JavaScript course is complete and throughout that journey you will learn a ton the course is definitely worth the time and like with anything else you get in what you put in I'm going to be making a separate video dedicated solely to each project where I go over it a little bit more and look at the code so you guys can check those out in the near future. I'm probably going to start those from the foundations project and go like one by one until we get to where we are now. Now I did lose a couple projects when my um, computer died and I had to wipe the hard drive and do a reinstall. So I've managed to pull everything that I did put on GitHub into my PC so if I skip anything don't be like don't think I didn't do it unless it's Battleship because I, I honestly. I don't know about that one. <laughs> All right, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'll have it up there. If you guys like the content, please do like and subscribe. It goes a long way knowing you guys are appreciating the content. It motivates me to keep making more. If you guys have any ideas for something you want to see from a beginner's perspective, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, I have only been coding for five months now, so I'm still very, very new to the game. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to build. I have a lot of ideas. And uh, if you guys haven't seen any of my other videos, I kind of go through what I've worked on every month. And I think that's going to do it for this one. Appreciate you guys for watching. Y'all have a good night, all right? Peace.